This week I have another holster to make, and I realized I haven't shown exactly this style of holster before. It's a paddle holster. It gets its name from the piece that goes on the back of it, which is called a paddle, uh, that is actually what attaches it to the belt, basically. Um, it doesn't really attach it. It's more just a, a friction piece that slides behind the belt or inside the waistband, and it'll have another piece sewn onto it that makes a bump that'll catch on the bottom of the belt. But it doesn't actually stitch to the holster on the bottom. It just stitches on the top and makes a flap that just kind of tucks in and can be taken in and out fairly easily. The holster pocket itself is symmetrical. And this one is for a uh, Springfield EMP, which is like a smaller version of a 1911. Um, this part I've got marked right hand grain side. That means the grain side of the leather will be up for this to be a right handed paddle for a right handed holster. And I marked that because this is not symmetrical. But to make this right handed or left handed, you would just put it on the other side of the holster. You just have to cut it uh, if you're worried about which side the grain side is. You have to pay attention to that. So let's get some pieces cut out. For the paddle, I went through my scrap bin and I found a chunk of real heavy um, stiff sort of 9 to 10 ounce, I think it is. It might only be 8 to 9 ounce, but it really looks like it's closer to 10. And I'm going to use that for the paddle because I want it to be really nice and stiff. And I don't want to be in this wrinkly weird stuff on the edge, so I'm going to move in a little bit. And this is a case of, yes, I'm not using the leather the most efficiently way, efficient way for getting the most pieces out of it like a manufacturer would. I moved in a little bit and I'm using the best piece of leather for this particular job because I want a nice stiff firm piece. This was up near the bend of the hide which is the rump of the animal and that will be your firmer leather. Now also from that stiffer piece of leather, a nice piece I cut off of it, I'm going to cut a piece that's down here, that's going to be what goes under the belt and makes a stop. And a piece that goes up here and that's just going to be a spacer. So basically I'm going to have a thick piece of leather on each side of the belt and that's what holds it all in place. This top piece can be fairly exact. The bottom piece I'm actually going to leave a little oversized because I can always trim it. We're going to go just down a little bit. And we're going to go out from it a little bit. Now, for the main body of the holster, I've got this better chunk of leather. It's a uh, side of Herman Oak. This is five to six ounce, which would be a little thin for this holster, but I'm planning on lining it with a piece that's about four ounces, three to four ounces. So five to six and three to four would make a thick enough holster. You make it in the eight to 10 range. Um, but you'd be plenty thick enough for the weight of this particular firearm. It'd be thick enough probably for a full-size 1911. Um, and as I said, the EMP is 
a smaller version of it. Just a little shorter, but similar in shape. for this one. As usual, punching out the holes makes life a lot easier on the cutting. And also, so does rough cutting it, and then going back and getting everything cut close. And we can go back and do, well, actually cut into the lines without all that leather in the way. All this stuff would be scrap anyway, so I never feel sorry for it. Makes it a lot quicker and easier to do. We just need our lining pieces that I'm going to put these. And those are going to be pretty easy. Um, I've kind of already got them marked out on here. Basically, I need a piece big enough to go on the back of this. It's symmetrical. It doesn't matter which way it's turned. Got a little bit more I can trim off of this. And this other piece of lining leather, which is a bit stiffer, is what I'm going to use on the back of the paddle. I'm not necessarily going to need it on the spacer because both sides of it are going to be covered with leather. I don't necessarily need it on the stop. But I kind of want to make the part that actually goes on the belt and around the belt a little bit stiffer. And you can add a lot of stiffness to something by lining it because the two pieces of leather kind of work against each other. The outside of the leather wants to curl up on both of them so they kind of pull against each other. Now on this project I did not um, have to dye it at all because the guy actually wants it to be left a natural leather color, which is why I turned my cutting board over and got to a clean side on it. Um, and I'm going to take around this edge and skive it a little bit thinner. I'm going to leave the full thickness here for the stop, but I want it to be not this thick on this edge. I want it to be at least half that, if not less, so it will be easier to slide it in uh, when you put the holster on. It'll slide behind the belt or slide into the pants easily, but then it won't come back out because it's got this full thickness of the stop on this side. So that's going to be our next bit, is to skype some of this off. Now, before I mentioned, this leather was really, really dry, as it's been in my scrap bin for I don't know how long. Um, so I'm going to wet it down some before I skype it which may or may not help but we'll let some water soak into that now when I wet a piece down especially if it's going to be a natural color I wet it all down the whole piece not just the edge I want to work on and skive 
because if you don't you wind up with water stains on it and marks that if you're dyeing it isn't always a problem as you'll be covering it up a lot of times but if you're going to leave it naturally you've got to wet the whole piece down or it looks funny Obviously, if anybody out there tries to do this at home, skiving with a round knife like I am, um, you'll notice I'm always keeping my fingers well behind that blade and underneath of it in this case, on these smaller pieces. And just barely holding that piece down. If I lose control of the piece, oh well, that's no big deal. I'll get it back. If I lose a piece of my finger, I may not get it back. All right, so I made a mistake on this piece. I just noticed it right after I got done skiving it that something wasn't quite right. It wasn't lining up with my pattern. I got it turned around and I put the skiving on the wrong side. So it didn't line up quite right. So that piece is gone and I cut another one. This time I marked my stitch line across the bottom so I know which side is which. And I'll just do the same thing. Wet it down, skive it. Get it all prepared and ready to go. Do some edge beveling around the edges of some of these pieces. This piece is going to be lined, so I'm just doing the grain side of it. I don't have to do the flesh side because I'm going to be gluing another piece onto it and edge beveling it later. Now there was no particular type of tooling requested on this, but I'm at least going to stamp a border around it. Um, just because I don't like to leave them too plain. Um, I think it really sets it off some if you at least have a border. Just something to put a little bit around the edge of that holster. Make it look a little bit more finished. Now I'm not doing this pattern on this holster. This is that scrap bit that uh, I messed up. But another way you can use this tool, is you can put a line of oppressions down with it first. And then you can take a 926, which is an F926. It's a figure carving tool for doing like grass or something. But you turn it and put its rounded side down and point up on each of those impressions. And you can make a kind of little flame pattern. And of course you can reverse it going from the other direction. And make a sort of neat little Charlie Brown sweater zigzag going on there. So, just some interesting uses of those tools if you're looking for other borders to use on things like this. I am now at part of this project where I have to let these pieces dry. And then I can come back to it. So, I'm probably going to call it for the night and come back to this tomorrow. And then I can finish these pieces up and hopefully get this all put together tomorrow night okay now that this has had a chance to dry we're going to do something else which we're going to have to wait for it to dry uh, i want to put a clear coat finish of some sort on these before i glue them together so that the glue doesn't get out on this front surface and soak in and i can't get it off of there if there's a clear coat finish you can usually kind of rub the glue off if there isn't you wind up with a, a spot that gets dirty basically and you'll have dark spots where the glue got on it and I'm just going to use sheep wool scraps uh, sheep wool shearling scraps and put on some of this new almost neat lack stuff that's labeled as neat lack
it's a good finish for uh, natural colors. Now, you'll notice that I've got four different pieces of leather. These were all cut out of different uh, sides or hides or leftover pieces of leather. And my two outside pieces are very similar in color to each other. Nice kind of little golden color. The two liner pieces don't match. Now in this case, that doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned. But this piece, it's going to be lining the back of this. You're probably never going to see anything because it's just going to be make the inside smooth for the belt and to stiffen this up. And this, I don't really mind if the inside of the holster is a little bit different color than the outside because again, you're really not going to be able to see much of it. You actually look in the holster, you're going to see that it's lined, but you're not going to be really comparing it as much to the color on the outside. And it's going to um, darken up a lot as it gets burnished anyway. So I'm not too concerned about that. But if you've got a project where you are concerned about the inside and the outside looking the same, like um, a Western holster where it's folded around and wrapped over, um, and you want it to match, you may want to consider taking everything out of the same piece of leather. So instead of five to six and three to four to make an eight ounce piece, you might take it all out of a piece of four to five ounce. It's all the same piece of leather. So that your liner and your exterior match each other. Especially if you're doing natural colors like this. If I was dyeing these, it wouldn't be as stark a difference, but you could still tell a difference. Um, unless, of course, you're dyeing it black and then it doesn't matter at all. Another thing that I think is important enough to mention on holsters is since this does stick almost instantly, I usually hold up one side, stick one of them down, and then I fold the holster a little bit before I um, stick the other side down. And what that accomplishes is it takes some of that fold that's going to be in there and puts it in kind of naturally. And then you wind up with less wrinkles on the inside once you get it shaped and molded and folded around. Otherwise your liner, I mean, you'll get some wrinkling even doing this. But it'll be much worse if you uh, glue it flat and then try and fold it around you'll wind up with a bunch of uh, wrinkles down the spine of it there, and it just doesn't look as good. So basically, doing a little bit of the shaping while you glue it together. It'll make it a little... Well, this is exactly the type of thing I made myself a trim knife for. It's going to be a little tricky on this side that was skived, but on most of the rest of it, you can just use that knife to follow right along the edge of that thicker piece of leather. and trim it off nice and even. So let's go ahead and get that piece together next. We'll glue that on and I'll take it down to the machine and stitch it. Now the placement on this is somewhat important. I want to be able to far enough in that my stitch line is not going to be a problem. But you don't want to go too far up because there's got to be room for a belt here in the finished holster. So I'm just kind of lining up again about an eighth inch or so in uh, from the edge of that piece is where my stitch line needs to be. Maybe closer to three sixteenths. Again, I let the contact cement dry really well. So 
So it basically adheres right away as soon as it touches. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch this before I trim it off. Because this, since it's all tapered, it might give me some trouble. It might shift. Uh, it might, the machine might skip stitches and cause all sorts of trouble. It doesn't like uh, tapers that well going, you know, sideways. Because it'll make the needle kind of do weird things. Um, so, let's see how this works. find out if it's going to work. Alright, that stitched without too much trouble. I am glad I left the trimming until after I stitched it. Because that actually kept it from rolling as much in the machine. Having that little bit of extra there to work against as the machine was stitching through. Otherwise, as this tilted, the bottom edge could have uh, slipped out and then all of a sudden it squirts out and your stitches wind up going through the edge rather than through the back. back up from the basement again and I've got these pieces I took them to the belt sander real quick off camera and I'm just gonna go around with the edge beveler and any place that I took off enough that it squared out again I'm gonna go ahead and bevel that off one of these days I might get in the habit of just waiting and edge beveling later but sometimes it just seems easier to have it beveled before I sand it and then just touch up. All the edges match up. It still seems a touch rough, and that's because we haven't burnished it yet, which will be the next step. But this holster mouth, the top of it here, and the bottom of it definitely need to be burnished before I put it together. Okay, I got edges are nice and smooth around the top and bottom. I could have dyed these a dark color just along that edge. And I kind of like that look. It's a very traditional leather working look. But the guy that I'm making the holster for saw something else that was natural. And he wanted me to make it like that. So it didn't have the edges dyed. Uh, so I did not dye them on this case. We need to go ahead and put this, these two pieces together. So the holster sits a little bit off, um, canted a little bit forward compared to the belt line. So it'll sit kind of like this. Uh, of course the holster can be canted different directions just by putting that on there at different angles. If you want it to be straight up and down, just move it around a little bit and now all of a sudden the holster is straight up and down. So I guess it's down to the machine to put this piece on and see if I can get this other stitching done or if I have to do it by hand. All right, big pile of leather here to stitch through. 
be a real pain to do by hand. Shouldn't be much trouble for this machine though. We'll see. Ditch this without that getting in my way. Let's find out. Okay, now it's all sewn together. I'm gonna do a little bit more edge beveling along this edge, slick it out, clean up that corner a little bit, maybe clean up a corner here. As I said, I've got a little spot right here. I'm just gonna take off with some of that. I carve it away so that there's no rough spot there to rub against somebody. All right, and then it's let's burnish it and call it done. Now, of course, the last step on this, even after I've got it burnished, is I've got to meet the guy and make sure his firearm is going to fit in it because. I did just make this from a tracing, and there's always a chance that I'll mess that up. It doesn't happen often, but it has happened. But I don't have anything the same size and shape as an EMP myself to try and see if it will fit. I have a 1911, but it's too long, and this was not made for a larger barrel like that to go through it. So I'll meet him at the local gun range. I'll wrap this up and uh, wrap his firearm up in plastic wrap uh, and wet this down. And I'll actually shape it to the firearm there at the range and make sure it's going to fit. But that would be the last step if you were making this for one that you actually have in hand, such as one of your own. Is just get some plastic wrap, saran wrap. Uh, I don't remember all the things people call it plastic film of some sort, even a plastic bag would work. Wrap the firearm up in it, wet the holster down, the plastic wrap will protect the firearm, and then you can just push it in there, and while the weather's wet, just press it down and shape it to what you're trying to find, uh, make fit. But otherwise, that is, we'll call that a simple paddle holster. <laughs> 